everybody thought that he had an outstanding, they were looking at years down the road, maybe the White House, you know, because right. he had that much promise. And and when he had the ride, that just tore down his, uh, his himself for one, he was just heartbroken. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I I knew Jerry because we we're the classmates, but, but and it wasn't a close friend, but I was an acquaintance. And um, and he, he even appointed me when I was uh, to one of the city commissions. I think it was well, it was the city youth commission uh, to help out. At any rate, uh, he decided not to run again, and uh, that left an opening for the mayor. And and I uh, had gotten good press right. uh, uh, as sheriff. Did a good job as sheriff. I and, bet you did. But, the who were the people by and large? People like Cahalen and Brickley. Who else? Who were kind of your kitchen cabinet type influences, or I'm not going to call them mentors, but people whose opinion and respect um, you had and, and that you relied on for advice. In I'll terms tell of you, uh, Vic Olson was an executive in the advertising firm, and uh, he was not only an advisor, but he was instrumental in the campaigns as to what is the best way to spend your campaign money for literature, for TV, for radio, or whatever. And uh, uh, Vic Olson, Jim Campitelli, who was a teacher, uh, it was a, f a friend of mine, uh, uh, Jerry Tanyan, Jim Brickley, th those are the people uh, uh, that uh, were um, friends and confidence. Uh, and in fact, uh, for a while, uh, the firm is we call Shaheen, Gribbs, and Brickley. We had that one office in the First National Building, and Joe Shaheen worked for Burton Abstract in a mm -hmm. full-time business. He had eight kids. I had five kids. Jim Brickley had six kids. <laughs> so everybody had a second job <laughs> to uh, pay for that. And, uh, and uh, those are the people that were friends and confidence and helped me in the campaign. Now, when I became mayor, you, 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 need, you need the lawyer, you need the, 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 the cop, the commissioner, and you need a good fiscal man. And I was able to get uh, Pat Murphy in for the c police job. Uh, Mike Lusak had that time, uh, had been a mayor of Highland Park when it was part-time. He decided not to be mayor because it became full-time. So he was in private practice and I needed somebody, and I forget, oh, I think it was, uh, Somebody in the federal system said, hey, you ought to, you need, I need a good lawyer. He said, you ought to check out Mike, uh, Mike Lusak because he's in civic affairs. He knows the mm -hmm. city problems. He had run Highland Park as a mayor on a part-time basis, and uh, he had a private practice. So I talked with him, and uh, we, uh, he said, great. So he took the job, and he was my, my attorney, city council, city uh, attorney. And, uh, and, uh, and then I needed a good fiscal guy. And um, Bob Rozelle had worked for Jerry Cavanaugh. He had been budget director under the Cavanaugh administration and had worked there as a, as a career man up the ladder, became budget director. And then Jerry appointed him as a department at Jerry Cavanaugh for a couple of years. I forget what department it was, maybe Parks and Rec or whatever it was. He ran that for a while. And he was highly recommended uh, at that time. He was going to leave uh, because he had been serving in that position. And he came highly recommended as a, as a man that knows the city budget and knows finance and had a fine reputation. And here again, I met him. I was impressed with what he said. I was impressed with the recommendations of people that knew, that, knew him mm -hmm. and his work. Mm -hmm. So I appointed him as chief fiscal officer and he did a magnificent job. And he was able to guide me to guide the city to balance the budget mm -hmm. and do the hard um, judgments that had to be made to lay people off to balance the budget. So you start out and you've got these three big problem areas and you hire these three very strong men to come in and take responsibility for the four years you're going to be mayor. Did they all last uh, four years or Murphy went to New York because yeah. Lindsay stole them? They lasted uh, as long as I, uh, I, 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 let me quickly say that when I decided not to run for a second term, I had about a year to go. And I thought in fairness to my appointees, uh, there are a lot of good good people. I wanted to tell them well in advance so they can 
go out and find another job and not be left in the lurch by, right. from the summer on. So I announced the December before the last year, last full calendar year, that I was not going to be a candidate uh, f to run again. And uh, so uh, by that time, uh, uh, by that time, uh, Murphy Murphy went to New York. To with, join Lindsay. Well, by the way, you know, he had a, he had a police department of 6,000 6, 6, people in Detroit. He went to New York, 25,000 people. Wow. Policemen. Yeah. So that's the difference in the sure. jobs. Sure. And that was his home, too. So. Right. Yeah, and but another, the other two guys lasted oh, yeah. kind of right through the they end. They did, of your, yeah, uh, except in the last few months. Last um, few months. Yeah. And um, uh, when uh, Bob Rizal left because he did such a great job, he went on, he was my fiscal officer and he ran the budget bureau. Uh, Stetcher worked under him. He was a budget director and he worked up the ladder. He was very good. So I had good people that made a big difference. I could rely right. upon them. And I remember, oh, by the way, when, when Murphy left, then uh, I was faced with a year and a half into the office with a new police chief. By that time, I got to know Nichols pretty well, so I gave him the job. John Nichols. John Nichols, and he became the police chief. Okay. And uh, uh, he uh, ended up running for mayor when I decided not to run again. He was very popular with the, with the community right. and with the police department, he decided to run for mayor. And one of the others that decided to run for mayor was Coleman Young, who had been state senator. And those two ended up being the two nominees at the, at the end of the primary. Now, I In late summer of 73, yeah. and, and you're still a mayor, uh, a mayor. and Nichols, your police chief, has, uh, you know, led the voting. Actually, he did lead the voting, and Coleman came in second. Remember, Ed Bell yeah. uh, was running, oh, yeah. and uh, right. John Moak, the Wayne State University professor, and Mel Rabbits. They were all in the race. Right. But Coleman got into second place, so you again had a white and an African-American. And then what happened? Well, one of the, the, the racial turmoil was... Uh, again, picking up in the communities, such as, for example, there were complaints by the citizens that if they had a Coleman sticker, a Coleman for mayor sticker, the, the police stopped him and gave him a ticket. <laughs> At least that was the accusation. Yeah. So in order, I, I said to John Nichols after, the, when he was nominated, I called him in and I said, John, I said, you've, you've never taken a vacation, you're working all the time, you've got about three months of vacation time left uh, to, <laughs> that you could leave today and you got three months vacation. And I said, look, at, uh, the election is about two months from now. And, uh, and if, if you're elected, uh, you'll be the mayor. If you're not elected, you know you'll not be the police chief. Uh, and uh, and uh, you'll, you'll retire, so why don't you resign? And walk gracefully, and then you can campaign. <laughs> right, you can campaign Makes full sense. time, and we you'd get, we get rid of the accusation. You'd that think he'd think of it himself. Well, he said, "I don't want to resign, Mr. Mayor." And I said, "Well, I, it's very important. If you don't resign, I'm, I may have to fire you." He said, "I, I don't think <laughs> I don't I don't I don't think I want to resign." I said, "Okay, I'll, I'm going to have to let you go." He didn't think I would. I gave, I gave him the letter the next day. <laughs> oh, jeez. And uh, so he was a good guy. I just thought you it like was time well, for him to go. You probably did the right thing. But on the other hand, that probably didn't help his campaign too much either. No. Mayor fires police chief. Exactly. Huh? Yeah. I mean, it would have been a lot better if yeah. he had just voluntarily said, look, I am going to, you know, voluntarily He'd have leave. picked up points. He would have picked up points. Instead, sure. he lost points. Sure. Yeah. Huh? yeah, that's right. And I felt a little bad about that, but it was important. I was not going to let the city have many riots or tumult uh, in the community after struggling for four years at the end of that. It, it was not necessary. You right. Know? I, when he ran in the primary, I didn't make him or suggest yeah. him resign. Right. But when he made the, uh, made the runoff, and I did, well, he went on to a distinguished career, by the way. He became chief of police at Farmington Hills for a while, and then... Spreen, who had been the police chief for Jerry Kavanaugh when I took office, uh, I appointed Murphy, so he got a job and he went to Oakland County, was elected Oakland County Sheriff for several terms. When he did not run again as, as sheriff, then Nichols, Nichols was the police chief yeah. in Farmington. He ran for sheriff. And he died.